Now, if I look at the integral, then the integral is not easy to solve because we are having two exponential term and about exponential what I will do, I will use integration by parts and integration by parts you know that the exponential integral is not vanishing because you take the derivative of it and it will again come. So it will again come in the integration then I cannot get rid of the exponential term. So what we do actually, we do this tactics, we basically reorient this geometry, like moving it this way. Then the proton distance is R, while the proton distance, one proton distance with electron, which is R1, I'm considering it equal R, and this one because when you reorient along the z axis this geometry then these are the distances r1 and i consider r1 equal to r and r2 based on this assumption will become and keeping this r along the z axis will come out to be r square means from the law of cosine the r square small r square plus capital R square minus 2 r r and cos of the angle between this and this r. So the law of cosine we will utilize here and this r2 distance will come out to be this. So our equation 2 will come out to be that when the r1 is equal r1 equals r and r2 is equal to r square plus capital R square minus 2 r r cos of the angle between them and a square root. So we have uh, these two here and I can write the equation 2 then that equation 2 this i will come out to be equal to e to the power, this is 1 over pi a cube and this will come out to be integral r1 is equal to r. So we have e to the power minus r over a and then put the value of r2 as well and this will be minus r square plus r square minus 2 r r and cos of the angle and this whole this is r2 value so this whole is divided over a here and then d cube r so for the d cube r i am writing means i am using the spherical polar coordinates and then this d cube r will come out to be r square dr sine of theta d theta and d phi so we have now converted the integral into one variable here like we have this orientation got rid of r1 and r2 and we are only left with this r and there is integration on dr and in the same integral we are having integration on sine theta d theta as well because if I look here, theta is involved here and we are having integration on theta. When I consider this one, d phi, then I know that the integral, this integral will come out to be 2 pi. Because it is the spherical polar coordinates, it will go around and it will make 2 pi here. So we are um, left over here that it is better, it is better to solve the sine, the theta integral first and then whatever the result of that will come out, we will put that thing in this equation and then we will find the value of r as well, the r integral. So 
let me call this is equation 3 here. Inside this integral, let me first solve the theta integral in this one. So in equation 3, we are going to the theta integral and the theta integral is that integration and we know that theta will vary from 0 to pi in spherical polar coordinates and e to the power minus r square plus r square minus 2 r r and cos of the angle this divide by e here and then sine of theta and d theta so if we first solve the integral with the theta then we will put that value big over here and we will then solve the integral for r so let's go on with the integral uh, the theta integral so here we uh, do suppose uh, two things here and the supposition is we are converting this into other variables and let's say the variable that we choose um, let's say y square let's say y square here means this is uh, the supposition so let's suppose means to solve the integral because it is not an easy integral so what we do we suppose that y square is equal to r square plus r square minus 2 r r in cos of the angle y square is equal to this one and then i do integrate this thing with respect to dy so integrate this with respect to dy and we will have like i just uh, do integrate this with respect to theta because i am interested over here in this theta not with respect to y but with respect to theta then what this will become this will become uh, like when i do its differential then this implies the 2y and then it will become dy like the differential 2y dy and this with respect to theta this will become 0 this will become 0 and here I will have minus 2 r r so uh, when I go here then cos theta derivative is minus sine theta so minus is plus here with this one and we have 2 r r and sine of theta d theta here so there is some cancellation means here 2 2 is gone with this one so we are having y dy equal to r r sine theta d theta but when i look at my integral big i need the value of sine theta d theta so i will uh, leave this value here sine theta d theta and then this implies that sine theta d theta can be written equal in terms of y is 1 is y over r r y over r r and d y so i have just converted this thing into uh, an integral 1 over r y dy so for sine theta i will put this thing and the theta integral will come out to me and we will decide the limit in a while but i can write this now is e to the power minus y because this is equal to y over a and then for sine theta d theta i can write y dy over r r and this is equal to 1 over r r integral and 
e to the y in e to the power minus y in dy. So our final integration has reached here, but we will have to decide the, the limits as well. Because we know, we know about the limits that when it is theta, then it is ranging from 0 to pi. Then what about y? What will be the range of y when you change dy? What will be the range of it? So let's see here. When angle is 0, then we know that cos 0 is equal to 1. So we are having r square plus r square this and equal to 1. So I can uh, see from here that this is y. Then it will be r square plus r square minus 2 r r because cos 0 is 1. So we have r minus capital R whole square and then square of it and square square will cancel with this because we have y here then what it will be it will be r minus r means the limits of this will come out to be r minus r so we have this r minus r here and then <coughs> when we consider when we consider this one but is we are taking out this thing out of the square root so I will have to write the absolute here because it is to be positive in any case it is to be positive otherwise when it will come when this r will be greater than this r then it will the whole value will become negative and taking a negative value out of the square root will make it a complex so i will have to write the absolute when this theta is phi and here is phi so cos phi is minus 1 minus makes this plus and then this is r square plus r square plus 2 r r then this is r small r plus r whole square and when the square root will remove that whole square so it will be tell r plus r now here i don't need to put the absolute because this is just the addition of terms and now chance of being coming out is complex so that is uh, we have uh, reduced this thing to the limits and the limits of this are basically from r minus r absolute to r plus r and we have the integral here and now our onward job is to solve this integral now we are going to solve this integral and the integral is not that difficult we will use an identity to solve this integral so the first one uh, let me write the identity which we can use here this is that if we are having an integral and the integral is such that x e to the power b x dx and this is equal to e to the power bx and x over b minus 1 over b squared. So in this integral, x is basically equal to y in our integral int b is equal to minus 1 over a and is x is equal to y so it means dx equals to dy so there is no problem with this one and based on this identity I can write this integral is this will be equal to this implies that this is equal to 
e to the power minus y over a because v is minus 1 over a and then the rest. So first let me uh, write this thing is equal to this implies let me without the limit let me first simplify this one and then I will put in this one. So if the integral is this that y e to the power minus y over e and dy then based on this formula this I can write is e to the power minus y over a and x is equal to y so 1 when this will become b minus 1 over a so it will become minus a y and minus 1 over b square so 1 over 1 over a square will make this thing a squared and then I can write this is if I take minus a common then minus a here and multiply this y inside so we will have y e to the power minus y over a and plus a because one a is common minus a is common and e to the power minus y over a here with this. So uh, finally we have our relation like this.